So Powell is speaking later at the Senate hearing, but expect the committee chair to be speaking first, making a statement before Powell takes the stand, and that should take about uh, 20 minutes. So we expect Powell to speak at about 9.45 or 9.50. Now we expected it to be a catalyst event, and uh, as I mentioned, look pre-market right now. Uh, we are at 3.69 here, right, hovering around this orange level. Right yesterday we were here. Uh, that was a six point gap down. Now this is what I mean by catalyst events bringing us across the ranges. If you remember in yesterday's video, this is why we try not to be swing trading. Now, but telling yourself I should have taken puts, uh, don't do that to yourself because it could have went either way it's because we're at the middle of this range right here. Now you can definitely justify why this is weaker overnight, but the truth is if big money wants to bring it up for more profit taking, they absolutely can do that. So no hindsight justifications, we just want to be trading according to the levels, no our risks, and we know that catalyst events, as I mentioned, will always bring us trading in newer ranges and this is the risk and the way to mitigate this risk is to prevent taking swing trades and taking decisive profits day by day. So don't be looking at this potential profits and think that you're missing out. No, this is just hindsight. It doesn't work that way if you want to be trading profitably daily. So as you can see, we have been gapping up and down in all sorts of direction for the past few weeks here and this just underscores how volatile the market really is right now so the best way to be trading this is not to try to swing any trades but to profit decisively day by day now the best time to have taken puts would have been here obviously now we saw a ascending wedge right here if you were with us uh, in the early of june if you take a look at 30 minute trend line chart right here if you remembered we saw an ascending wedge here and the market just went down right from there. So what I'm trying to say is that don't be looking out for big opportunities like this. When it comes, it will come. Don't always be actively looking out for that because you will be giving yourself confirmation bias, which is a very dangerous thing when we are trying to trade. So when we look at this, don't be too concerned. As I mentioned, this is just pre-market volume is insignificant. Now, well, depends on where we open. We will trade accordingly to that. Now, I also want to try to dispel as many biases as possible in this daily brief. Now, firstly, just because we have get down quite significantly does not necessarily mean that it will always be a red day. Now, there are days that we get down and it turns out to be extremely green days. Now, this is one example, right? We get down here and look at it. It's a full green day. Now, of course, these were the more infamous ones, right? This was a crazy, this was a 52 week low at that time. So, so was this, this was a 52 week slow. So when we opened, gap down lower, right? Doesn't mean that it will not be a green day. So there is still a possibility like that. Now, especially when Powell is speaking, it's just a wild card right here, right? So we just have to be very, very careful uh, to not start with directional biases as we open the day. Now, fair enough that we were brought to a new range, but it does give us some very good information uh, moving forward. So firstly, this is a very solid level now. So now we know that this pink 376 is going to be quite a solid resistance level. And so when we revisit this level again, this will be at the back of our mind. So we are gathering intel for our future trades as well. So don't be looking out at this and think you're missing out. we we'll try to gather as much information as possible from this market right now with this movement here. Now remember yesterday, I was also mentioning how we could also be forming an inverse head and shoulder pattern, isn't it? And I mentioned that if this right shoulder does not gain enough momentum and strength to even retest this level here, this orange level here, now this will obviously be a bull trap. I mentioned that in yesterday's video. So now we have some confirmation here that even if we do head back here, 
and we do not gain enough strength here. But we know that this will be a very ideal place to be shorting the market thereafter. So will we trade back here? We will keep this in mind for sure and revisit this. But for today, let's just focus right now. Now, this level here, orange 368 here. Now this has been an extremely solid level. Now I want to combine it with the yellow 369 here. Now if we take a look at the five minute chart here, you will see this yellow 369 level and this orange 368. Now this is pre-market now. So if you see right here in this 30 minute trend line chart, this orange level here, as well as another small zone here, this yellow 369, which I did not indicate on this uh, 30 minute trend line chart. Now, this is an ex extremely, extremely strong supply zone. So this is somewhere that if the chart does open at this area, now this will be a low hanging fruit supply zone right here this is really strong now we have to be taking puts here that would be the right play to go now i want to address something about this low hanging fruit play so yesterday we also had a possible low hanging fruit play here now i want to prevent any misinterpretation of what it really means so i just want to take a look at yesterday's play here now firstly i want you to understand if we open below this 372 yesterday it is expected to have some sellers here. Now, it will not be as strong because if you take a look at a 30 minute chart, this was the rejection that we had from here. This was the only supply that was from here. So this would have turned out to be a stronger support if you can see more than a resistance. So I mentioned, if you remember, that if we had 0 0.5 or even one point movement, take the profit and remember I mentioned that that was the low hanging fruit I was talking about so it did move about 0 0.6 but it was very difficult to trade it has to be a quick scalp here now if I were to change it to the one minute chart it will be much clearer to see so if you were to be taking a trade here for the low hanging fruit this would have been the trade right here Right, when we started to test this, we moved 0 0.6 points down but that's about it right and then we started to have some strength from this week here and then we see this volume spike to break us through now i took a trade here but because this was early candles and i wanted the low hanging fruits i took a little late i took it later here after the 0 0.6 point move so i wasn't able to scalp i know some members who scalped here uh, it's a very good trade uh, you managed to take 0 0.5 point profit that's great sometimes it works out but i took it late but I had very clear stop loss here because I knew that this orange would have to be the resistance. So when this red candle appeared, now there was some hope to that, but after this green candle appeared, I got stopped out immediately for a very small, small loss, especially at the start of the day. And I took reduced contracts. I took half the contracts that I usually take. So this was a risky trade, especially in early candles when you do not have a very clear price action to be basing it off from. So when we take trades like this, we have to be careful. We must understand the risks that it entails. So in the same measure, if we do open below here, now there's a slight difference here because this is actually a very strong supply zone. There is a lot of rejection here. This has been a very strong resistance, now, including this yellow level here on top at 369. So this entire area here is a very strong supply zone. Now if we do open below here, now there, get ready, there will be ready sellers right here. Now, likewise again, now in this market, um, members we've made a lot of money past two weeks by being decisive. So your call on it again, always take your decisive profits that's the only way to be profiting in this volatile market right now don't be hanging on too much so you have to adjust your mentality and not be waiting for home runs your home runs must be runners that are already protected stress-free trade you've already taken your partial profits to protect the trades and your runners are just bonuses if we do head up or head down so always take your decisive profits so this is how we should trade if we do open uh, below right here. Uh, the market gives you opportunities like that, you take it, all right? Even if it says, I keep mentioning, if it's 0 0.5 points, one point, you take the profits from here. Now, if you get stopped out, that's not a problem because this is a principal trade because we have a very clear stop loss here. So don't get too greedy. Don't be holding your trade longer than you should because likewise for yesterday's trade here, 
right? If you took your trade longer than you should, if you did not put your stop loss strictly just above orange and you waited and you waited, you will lose a lot of money. So we have to be very principled when we trade, set your stop loss and respect it. But otherwise, yesterday, I think it was quite straightforward, right? The trend is your friend. We also identified uh, this bull flag here with a descending wedge. And we took the calls from here, right from the support level as well. When all the way up, we took profits from there. So it was a great trade as well. And when the price action and structure presents itself, we could take full contracts here. And that's what we did as well. Now thereafter, we identified the high of day and we also took some puts here because we also observed that there was some weakness here and forming head and shoulder pattern, especially on the five minute chart. And yesterday's trade should end by around 12 to 12.30 Eastern time because thereafter what happened was that we started chopping one point range. Look, it's just one point range for the next three to four hours, just, just ridiculous use of time. So don't be hanging around the market too long. Even if you held trades, you will be chopped out of your trades right here. So we had the early trades. These are where we want to be taking our profits and calling it a day to take your profits and just enjoy the rest of your day. This shall be the mantra for how we trade in this volatile market right now. If we do open above this orange level here, I will be very concerned that we first need to be clearing both this orange and yellow levels right here. Now we want to be taking over this, reclaiming it as support before we head up. Now I want to show you yesterday's trade again. And even though you may miss this orange as support, right now this was a confirmation for me that it will be bullish, but we took the trades right here. Now, if I were to change it to a one minute chart again, we identified the bull flag here before we took our calls off the support. So don't be chasing right here. Like right? chasing here would have been a bad idea, right? Wait for some form of structure before we take the trade. Now, if we missed this yesterday and we see that the buying channel was so gentle and it's just impossible to get an entry, then don't. If the market doesn't give you a favorable place to get an entry, don't enter to get chopped, right? Don't enter to, to suffer. Now, any structure like this is susceptible for some form of reversal, some form of structure change. It may flatten and we wouldn't be able to tell the difference before it dump. So once we miss this bull flag here, now this was just a very gentle buying channel. Now, granted, it was about a two point increase, but if you think about it, a two point increase over three hours is just not worth the time, right? About two to three hours. It's just not worth the effort. So don't be chasing trades. Sometimes when you miss the trade, that's fine. Let's just call it a day, right? Don't be entering the market just to be losing money. So likewise, later, if we do open above this orange and the yellow, right? We cleared off the supply zone here. Now wait for it to base it off support before we see a possible rally. Now, so much of it depends on what Powell is going to say, right? But his narrative is going to be the same. It is just, that's just how big money is going to use it to manipulate the market. And the SEC will be none the wiser, right? Because you're hiding under the guise of a catalyst event to move the market according to your whims. So we just have to be careful identify where the big money is heading to and just join in, take our quick profits and go. This is our game plan. It has to be like that if we want to be making consistent money. So don't be predicting the market. Try to look out what big money is doing and we will just join in the fun. So yesterday we got it right here. We knew that they were going to be bullish and then we saw that there was some weakness and we took the low hanging fruits right here. So yesterday two trades was what it takes to take away our daily profits. So today, what we want to be looking out for is where we open, where big money brings us before Powell starts to speak. If it's below here, this is an extreme supply zone. Now, big money will not be messing with that. So if we do open below here, the low hanging fruits is just to be taking puts here. Take your quick profits. If they want to be manipulating the market, they can. 
but take a profit and go call it a day. Now, if we do open above, wait for some form of structure, wait for some basing off of support. Now, if there's going to be a buying channel, we'll identify that and we will tag along the big money's buying channel. Now, as I explained in the videos in the past, buying channels are just the big money's way of just entering a parameter for buying or selling and they let the algorithm do it for them, right? So they'll just be buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling, just earning the difference that's known as arbitrage. So we just want to identify the channels and just tag along for the ride. So in summary, today, what we need to be pay attention to is firstly, a gap down does not mean that it may be a red day. We have to remove all forms of confirmation biases from our heads. Secondly, we have to get used to being gapping down or up. Uh, this is just going to be how it's like because the feds are just not taking leadership. Next, we get that information on this level here being weak. So most likely uh, we will see a bull trap again, right? Because we started flagging here. As long as we don't retest this orange 380 or to gain strength, then this will be a bull trap area right here. Then and the next time we're headed here, we will have more confidence to increase our positions for shorting the market. So these information are precious, right? So don't look at the gap down and think that there's nothing to gain from this. We gain some information from here because of our earlier analysis. Now next, if we do open below this orange 368 as well as this yellow 369. Now I've indicated them at the five minute chart here. Now we do open below there. There's going to be a very strong supply zone here and low hanging fruits will be to take puts. Now remember the concept of the low hanging fruits. Uh, you have to be prepared to have very clear stops, reduce position if you want to lower your risks and always take decisive profits, call it a day. All right, yesterday's trade, some trades are just not worth taking. So if you missed the trade, especially here and also here, right? This trades here are just not worth taking, right? Any trades after 12 noon yesterday was just not worth taking. So sometimes we must know when to stop trading. That's the way to be preserving our capital. Now, if we do open above this orange here, and it's possible, remember, gapping down, we can have the most spectacular rallies where we gap down, right? Case in point right here, it's possible, right? And also, of course, the more infamous ones right here and here, but, but these were 52 week lows, so I will not be comparing them too much, but in the event that we do, head down to the Bollinger as well, the bottom Bollinger. Now, this will be obviously a great place to be taking calls if we really do head down as slow as this level here. Now, remember last week, I also mentioned how this level is also strongly defended. So we will also be looking to take calls. If we do come down, it's not too far away, just five points down if we do come and revisit here. But otherwise we may be flagging at this level. If we remain underneath this, then we will just be trading within the ranges up and down. Now if we do open above orange and yellow. So remember we have to clear both orange and yellow. Then I'll be looking to buy at a buying channel. Now we have to be more careful when we're buying calls in this market because well, if we take a look, the rewards for doing so is very limited. We are only uh, limited to maybe rallying up to here and we need to identify a buying channel before we do so. Now, otherwise, there's no guide. There's just too many resistances above us. We'll just be looking uh, to be dumped because we are in a very bearish market now, as I always mentioned, right? And yesterday I mentioned, right? If we were to reach this level or this level, right? I said, you best believe there will be profit taking, right? Never expected it to be pre-market. I was expecting maybe we flag one more day before this profit taking, or we prop the level up for Powell's speech before we have a big dump. So the dump happened anyway, once you reach this level. So that's just a manipulation of uh, the big money right now. We just have to be extremely careful. So if you're taking calls, uh, don't be hanging in there for too long. 
right? Especially in this very bearish market, take your profits, call it a day. So once again, the Discord server, I will be running through what Powell will be saying. I'll be doing some commentary on Discord, especially with the hearing and see how the market brings us and observe structure, especially the supply zone here. And if we do clear it, we must have a buying channel before we take any calls. We know the limitations of calls here. Now this is great information for our future trades if we want to take it. So today it's all about preparing your mind, right? Yesterday was a great warm up for the first trading day of the week as we get ready for this week. Now we must be ready for the big money to manipulate the market and we must take our profits decisively, call it a day. Don't be hanging around the markets for too long because it's going to chop you up. So just be taking your profits and go. Now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you closer to opening bell.